In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available Available in both the public and private sector, and we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world. We'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio, and here are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey guys, this is Sandra and I'm here with Robin Boyd. I'm reporting in from New York, from actually rural, uh, <laughs> rural farm country, New York. And Robin is in New Hampshire. Robin, we've got great weather over here. How about you? It's beautiful. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's warm, but it's not as muggy as I was, I was bracing for. A couple of weeks ago, we had that horrible, horrible, uh, deep, deep humidity. So, um, at least it's not terrible. But we're both in the same time zone, Sandra. <laughs> That's a miracle. Well, and I got all goofed up because, you know, I was, I've been trying to figure out, okay, the radio show's at 5 o'clock Eastern time, but that's 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock my time, and yep. confirming with everybody because our guest today, Jody Bramer, is in California, and I got all ready to get on the show at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and I'm like, where is everybody? Why aren't people in the chat? And then my dad's like, you're an hour off. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to be in, in different time zones, and even when we are working by coastal, we always have to stop and say, okay, does that mean 2 o'clock your time, 3 o'clock, and then you get, if you get clients that are in that mountain stretch and are they mountain or are they central or and sometimes Arizona doesn't go to mountain they go <laughs> oh Arizona just just that's just not fair that's not even a fair fight I know we we had a conference call we were trying to line up with a client and and just having to try to figure out well which time are they let's just put the California time and we can all count backwards <laughs> no. it is <laughs> it is. It's really, and it's disconcerting because I was in, uh, I had stopped in Denver, then I stopped in Chicago for a day, and then I came to New York, and I'm like, I don't know what time zone I'm in at this point. Yeah. Well, at least you're there for a little while, and you can sort of uh, get your bearings um, before you have to go crazy with time zones again. Well, you know, it's really good um, that we have these discussions because time zones cause a lot of problems for our families on deployment. And our show today is is really geared to the kind of like the un the unspoken um, family issues. That um, I'm sorry. Do you guys have a lot of feedback? Not right now. There I we don't. go. Okay. Yeah. Um, our families. Um, have specific issues on deployment, and we got sure. a lot of write-ins, Robin, especially from Facebook, the Facebook group, yep. talking about how difficult it is for siblings. And when I was searching around the Internet, I found a lot of stuff for families, but they really dealt with the mother, yeah. the father, and even grandparents and spouses and the children of the service members. But I wasn't finding a whole lot. I found one little Facebook group that was called Siblings of Deployed Service Members. Yeah. And um, it didn't have too much activity. Um, and then I found a Red Cross program that offered a program for adults and for children. It was a four-hour program, two and a half hours for the adults, two hours for the children. But I couldn't tell from the material if they were supporting the siblings. There, yeah, I think it's it's hard, and it. But the point is, is that you do have to go digging, and that's what's unfortunate. Um, when I was searching around, the one the one spot that I did find some decent information was on one source, military one source, uh, dot mil, and that happened to be the one 
one location that seemed to have a bit of, of um, uh, quality uh, information. So Yeah, because uh, it's different. But, it's hard to have to look like that, though, and that's what hopefully we can get some more information from Jody because it's when you have to really go searching and searching and searching. That's not that's not supporting the family. No, it's not. And and what's interesting is I got a email in from uh, one of our regular listeners, Sonia, who has a, a son and he's 18 years old and he's deployed and he has younger brothers and sisters. You know, and he's got an eight year old sure. brother. So he's not a, he, it's not like his dad's on deployment, but his Perfect. brother's on deployment. That's right. And a lot of, a lot of, um, different feelings, a lot of uh, similar feelings, but a lot of different feelings and a lot of stress in that. Uh, and I'm sure Jody's going to address this. The child is going to start bearing, their sibling will start bearing a lot of this sort of responsibility because they're knowing that the mom and dad are so obsessed with the the deployed child and they're they're not sure where they fit in with with what's going on so that's that's really really a challenge for every family every family that is a, a military family has a lot of a lot of things to deal with and uh, so hopefully we can we can put a lot of that out in the open. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that when, you know, we had some, uh, I remember one of the ladies from PODS, from Parents of Deployed Soldiers, uh, she wrote in to the show and made the comment that, you know, a lot of services are out there to support the mother, which she likes. You know, if you're a mother or your sure. father, there's, a, you know, a lot of things for parents. Um, but she didn't know how to support her other children um, right. because the materials there and she said you know they're scared they have stress and anxiety and she's like I'm dealing with my own stress and anxiety with my one son being deployed you know how do I not convey to my other kids how afraid I am so that they get even more frightened right and when when the siblings see other things uh, on television whether, or on the news or another friend whose sibling may have experienced something serious or devastating, all of that just compounds everything. And a parent really is challenged as far as, all right, how much do I talk about? How much do I not talk about? Do I keep it out in the open? Do I, do I try to be brave? Do I let them see me cry? that's really really hard and I, and there again too every child is different as far as how much do you tell them how much do can they handle uh are they going to feel bitter because you're not telling them everything um if there is something more serious to talk about why didn't you tell me mom you didn't you weren't honest with me all those kinds of things start coming out that's really hard it is really hard. And, you know, when I was doing the research for today's show, you know, I talked, I'm good friends with the principal of my kid's school, and yeah. I was talking to um, her and some other people about what services they have for, you know, in the school, do they recognize, you know, siblings who have deployed brothers and sisters? And they had nothing. They had services in place because we, we, we are served by an Air Force base, you know, sure. for um, they had programs in place if you were the daughter or son of a deployed service member, mm-hmm. but they had nothing if you had a sibling. Right, right. I think a lot of times the school guidance counselors are going to want to know what's going on and they then can always be that sort of go to for for a child whether it is a sibling whether it's a dad whether it's a parent i i think it's really important for parents to really level with the staff at at the child's schools uh really important yeah and uh, you know some of our uh service member families this came up uh this came out actually out of pendleton um one of the comments when i was exploring this topic one of the questions mm-hmm. they they raised was A lot of these military families are single mom families, and the eldest son goes into the military because he gets benefits, he gets a good job, he gets an education, and then this single family all of a sudden loses their eldest son who functions in a lot of respects as a father figure. Sure, sure. You know, it was very interesting, all the different 
you know, questions and scenarios that came up. So poor Jody. Jody's going to get her hat handed to her, but I know she's going to be <laughs> <laughs> great because we're just going to come from her from all angles. Because if there's nothing on the web, what do we do? We ask Jody. That's right. Jody is our our go to guru of, of wisdom. Uh, Sandra, before we go to our break, I do want to say thank you to Marcella Stretch. While you were traveling last week, I had Marcella join me and uh, fill in the the co host seat, and we had a great time together. She's such a great gal, and she's the founder of the uh, Parents of Deployed Service Members group that uh, we are so fond of. They have so many people that are tuning in, and we just want to say a big thank you to Marcella. She was great. She was, and to, and to encourage anybody listening today to sign up for PODS because they have that Battle Parents program that she's working on, which I think, you know, you've got battle buddies for your sons and daughters to have battle parents. You know, I said it a couple of weeks ago. I think that's such a great idea, such a great support, and I can see how that could work for siblings, too, if these families get involved with each other. If we've got two kids who both have deployed brothers or sisters, they could be a great support for each other as well. Absolutely. And there again, this is one of the most wonderful things about our era right now, this this generation, is that we do have more resources for communication that we never had before. We never had stuff like this. Uh, This is wonderful. It is. It is. Um, So, Rob, when... um, when parents go on to pods, it's a closed group, and they mm-hmm. need to sign up. Um, and so did you sign up for pods? I know I'm a member of I, pods. Yes, I am. I, and I love I love the interaction between everybody. It, all you need to do is send a, a message to Marcella explaining a little bit of who you are and your connection to the military, and then she will accept your, your membership. One of the beautiful things about having a closed group is that you know that you're relating to another service parent person uh, spouse and I think this is um, a great asset because you can kind of know you can talk a little more freely than than wondering who's going to be reading this and who's connected with whom and might see it uh, we've got a couple minutes before break, or a couple of seconds, actually, Sandra. And then on the other side of the break, we're going to say hi to Jody Bramer. She is a family therapist. She is our, as I said before, our guru of wisdom. We'll be back on Military Mom Talk Radio in a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Information is power. The power to change your life. So be here for Education to Excellence. Some of the most valuable information you may ever receive will be shared with you 7 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday night with Education to Excellence with your host, Bruce Beichman. You'll benefit from insightful shows featuring guests that are proven experts in their field. Little-known facts on how to improve your health by making one very simple change in your morning routine. If you're a high school graduate or working adult and a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate degree from an accredited college would change your life, you won't want to miss this. Education to Excellence. Shift your career into high gear without ever attending a traditional college class. Learn investment strategies from proven experts who have a track record of helping normal individuals build abnormal wealth. Check out their website, education2excellence.com. Then join us for the show, Education to Excellence, with your host, Bruce Beichman. Tuesday nights at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on toginet.com. Whether you're four and a half or 100, you can retrain your brain. Learning RX, the radio show, is on toginet.com. Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time with Martin Kruger. Learning RX programs are quick, they're efficient, they're life changing, and they're permanent. Unlike tutoring, cognitive skills training or brain training targets the root issue causing learning struggles. Time and money spent on chronic tutoring is a clear signal of cognitive skill deficiency. That's where Learning RX comes in. Call today, 903 617 6899. 903 617 6899. Then join us for the show here every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. 
and take advantage of the power it holds to improve your life. There are so many brain training issues that Learning RX can help you with. It's not a product, it's an experience. So join us for Learning RX, the radio show with Martin Kruger. Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on Toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are welcoming Dr. Jody Bramer. She's a specialist that we've had come on our show again and again. She's well-versed in the military family, being a military uh, wife herself, and um, she always helps us figure out information. And Robin and I, when we got some requests from Facebook to talk about the effects of siblings while their sibling is on deployment, um, we went and researched. And Rob, there wasn't a whole lot out there. There wasn't. There wasn't. But there are. We did, and we should say um, at the at the top of this segment, uh, so we could get into it a little bit more. Uh, we did find a wonderful video, which we did post. Uh, it is on our Facebook page as well as on uh, MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com. And Sandra, did you happen? Did somebody send that to you, or did you find that? I I came across that. What I did was I Googled. Uh, sibling deployment, you know, issues with siblings on deployment, and that video came up. It's a six-minute video. It's, it's, you know, free. Everybody can go and watch it. I thought it was really well done. It was really compelling. Totally made me cry. Oh, of course, me too. I'm sitting here in a car. I, you know, Stephen just doesn't ask anymore. <laughs> After 35 years of seeing me reaching for Kleenex, he's like, oh, fine, I'll go. <laughs> He doesn't ask anymore. <laughs> yeah, but if you but, have children and one of your children is deployed and you have siblings, um, I thought it was really well done. I thought it raised a lot of good points and could be something you could watch with your child or even just you watch it and have some discussions with your children. One of the things, and we've, I know we've got to go to Jody. one of the things that was interesting to me, San, is watching each of the three siblings of this young man, uh, how each of them dealt with it a little bit differently. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's probably something that Jody can address because placement in the family oftentimes does have such a different dynamic, so... Well, and I thought his, you know, the video basically starts with a young man who's deployed in Okinawa, and he's talking to his siblings, and, you know, he opens up saying, I want you guys to be proud of me, I want you to, you know, really, you know, I- I'm doing this for you. You know, it's really, it's, it gives everybody's point of view. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. It's really interesting. So we we want everybody. That's why we wanted to post it before the show uh, started, so we can encourage everyone. And the family name is Shay, and I did not catch where they were from, but it was Jimmy Shay. So we thank Jimmy Shay for being uh, so creative to have done this and opened up his family's hearts to be able to uh, share that with the world. Yeah, and help other families. So sure. And- Speaking of helping other families, let's bring on Dr. Jody Bramer. Uh, Jody, are you there? I sure am, and I've been listening intently. I haven't seen that video yet, but it sounds mm. wonderful. It is. It is. It's a great conversation starter, you know, for the different way that people handle stress and trauma and anxiety and distance. Um, I just thought it was great. Well, it was interesting. When you asked me to talk about this this topic, so many different things came to mind, and you and Robin addressed so many of the most pertinent and topical uh, areas of this discussion, which is age of the siblings, uh, the responsibility that the siblings take on, the feeling of being kind of in the shadows when the military member goes off. All of these are huge, and especially the age of the sibling and the the family placement of where that sibling is. Is it the oldest in the family to leave? Is it the middle child? Is it the youngest? Those can all Mm -hmm. have serious effects on the siblings remaining back. 
Well, it does, Jody. I mean, I see it in my own family, just, the, you know, the difference between the oldest and the youngest. And, you know, when somebody's taken out of the mix for whatever reason, it causes a whole shift in the family. Oh. And it's a different shift than, I think, you know, somebody going off to college. Yes, because person going off to college is assumed that at some time they're going to come home and visit, even if it's just for Thanksgiving or Christmas or for summer vacation, or that they will still be around or close enough to even visit at college. But when people, when siblings, when, when members go off to war, there's always that unspoken sense of, oh, my God, will they come back? And what is the reality that this presents to me? And how will this affect me? How will this affect my parents? How will this affect my aunts and uncles and my younger siblings, if I have any? This, this, is, very, this is a very real fear. I mean, we've lost so many incredible military members overseas that it is it is a reality i have a, a set of clients right now who the parents are seeing me but the son was killed and there's an older sibling and a younger sibling and i've seen the whole family as a result and even though the younger sibling is in her late teens it affects so many aspects of her life because she and her older brother that she lost they went through school together they had the same teachers they had the same friends and the loss that she's feeling is very different from the older sibling who had already been out of the house and married and gone. Um, it was more of a loss of a friend. It was more of a loss of my arm. You know, we were close. We, were, we weren't husband and wife. We were brother and sister, but we were really close brother and sister. And the parents are dealing with their own grief, and each member of the family has its own grief to process. Well, and I think, you know, what you brought up, Jody, about that is, you know, every military's family's worst fears come to light. You've got parents that are dealing with their own grief, and then you have multi-age children in the family that really are dealing with it, not only in their own way because they're individuals, but because of their ages. Absolutely. When I was uh, an elementary school psychologist, uh, I worked in the Irvine School District in California, and this was at the early stages after Desert Storm, before the big push into Iraq, when we were just mobilizing. And I worked extensively with the children of um, grades, kindergarten through fifth grade, to talk about the things they were going through if their sibling, in this case, because it was uh, they were too young and old to have, have a parent going off, but it was, there were several 18, 19, 20-year-olds that were going off that were older siblings to these children. And in working with them and the letting them understand the cycle of grief, of the sense of loss, and the sense of unsureness. And even, even based on whether it was a kindergartner or a fifth grader, there is a very abstract idea of what time is. So if their big brother goes off to war, well, when is he coming back? Is he coming back in time for Christmas? Is he coming back by the time you are a third grader? Is he coming back you do, at what time? To give them a sense of when they're coming back. And then there's that all very real idea that they may not come back and addressing an elementary school student is much different than addressing middle school or high school plus the the attitudes the understandings the morals the the concept of war what is war why is war the politics of war that changes a lot through the age range too when it's when it's an elementary school student um, a young child all they know is that their older brother or sister isn't there but when we get into dealing with high schoolers or even college kids who have a lost sibling, they start wondering, you know, was the war necessary? Did they have to lose a child, uh, lose a sibling to this? And they have the sense of not only loss but anger, and they have to know where to direct that. And that's why I think counseling and, and therapy is so important because they're feeling all of this this anger, the the why why you know well why was it necessary and of course the parents are dealing with their own and there can often be conflicts in the house because of this well sure you've got anger mixed with grief mixed with frustration depending on the age of the kid and how much they understand um, and they, then you've got, especially with kids, you know, they act out when they can't verbalize. You can have a really tough situation in the family that I really believe can be relieved by getting some counseling. I know TAPS and, you know, private counselors are available to help family members who have lost service members. Um, but I 
think, you know, and Jody, correct me if I'm wrong, the same would apply if the family member comes back injured and especially severely injured. We are talking a lot of range of injuries. We're talking anything from PTSD to actual physical, maybe loss of limbs or burns. Um, we have a variety of injuries that when, when our military member comes back, not only do the parents or the spouses have trouble with the reintegration and the, the welcoming back home, but a sibling, especially a younger sibling, might look at their older sibling, especially if there's some deformity involved, and be scared. You know, this, this isn't my brother or sister who left. This isn't who I know. What's wrong with this person? Why, why are they looking like this? Why are they acting like this? Why are they talking like this? And there's a lot of adjustments that um, can come from that as well. You're, you're very, very right. Jody, do you know whether some school systems are very open to having their guidance counselor do, say, a classroom talk? And as long as the child is is comfortable with this, bringing some of their the, the uh, friends' questions out in the open. Because I think one of the, the most difficult thing is when a child's peers start to either stare or start to not know how to approach them about a topic, so they either completely alienate them on the on the school uh, play yard. I I know the school that I used to teach in. We would have the guidance counselor come in every so often. If a child needed a hearing apparatus, we talked about it with the whole class. If the child was learning um, how to say walk with crutches or something, we took it to the whole class, and that sort of alleviated a lot of that peer pressure. Uh, we've only got a minute, and here I just asked you this huge question. <laughs> um, every school district is a little bit different, but I do yep. think that if you have open communication between the parents, families, and the principal or the school counselor, I would think that anybody dealing with a child in that school that is, is dealing with this would be a welcome subject, and, and somebody could present it and say, hey, I, I want somebody to come in and talk about this. I have somebody mm-hmm. who will talk about this. And I would think that the school would be open for it. I know our particular one was. I have a really neat school district here, and the, the guidance counselor that we had at the time was awesome. And they just it just helped with the peers, and that was just one less thing that a kid had to deal, deal with. We're going to be back in a moment with Dr. Jody Bramer. Oh, this is such a wonderful conversation we're having. Uh, we'll talk more about how we can help siblings and how we can help families more in a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. I am not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet. This is your chance, ladies, to hear stories of hope and healing from someone who's been there. Someone who has fought back from the horrors of incest. Minister Diane's innocence was stolen from her in the land of alcoholism and mental illness, which led to her being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused by her parents. Yet in spite of this trauma, she has gone on to become a successful wife, mother, registered nurse, and minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm Free is a straight-up show to enlighten you and to lighten your load. Do not let the weight of this world or the things that have happened to you control your life. For more on the show and Diane and her book, The Story of Me, email her directly from her show page here on Toginet. Then, join us for I'm Not the Woman I Used to Be. I'm Free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Mark Lipinski is coming to Toginet. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. A live two-hour show Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Creative Mojo. It's fun, entertaining, informative, inspirational, and illuminating. Lipinski has worked on such shows as Oprah, The View, The Joan Rivers Show, and Ricky Lake. He's busy, but he's got the drive to share with Creative Mojo, dedicated to the modern crafter and crafting lifestyle. 
Dive into the info and enjoy everything from celebs to entertainment news to recipes, quilting and needlework, knitting, painting, woodworking, Christmas crafts, and so much more. This show boldly encourages you to discover and harness your own creative spirit by living creatively every day. For more on Mark and the show, check out marklepinski.com. Don't miss the fun. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Levinsky. Wednesday afternoon, starting at 3, 2 Central, on toginet.com. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we have Dr. Jody Bramer on today talking about a very, very important topic and an often overlooked topic in the military family, and that is how do we help the siblings of deployed service members? Lots of information out there for wives, husbands, you know, moms and dads, um, and the kids, but it's often overlooked that we've got the siblings here. And Jody, I'm going to go right over to you because I know you need to get going shortly, but um, we get a lot of letters about the family readiness, you know, not really covering this part. So that's why we're having this show. Can you give us some advice for families, um, you know, when they have deployment? Should they tell the teachers at school? Should they tell the counselor? I what think, would you recommend? I think it's very important to let as many, uh, I don't want to use the word authority figures, but people in, in a position to help the child know what's going on. And I, I mean primarily the, the main teacher, absolutely, especially if it's you know, kindergarten through fifth grade, but also when you get into middle school and high school to let the principal know or the vice principal is often the person in charge or the guidance counselor. Let them know. I know that there's sometimes that if um, I I have another client whose father died, but she is in high school. I know that we're talking about siblings, but it's the same kind of concept, that she has what's called a free pass, that if she ever needs to get up and walk out of class because things are too difficult, it just happened within the last two months, that she has the ability when when children are more structured in the middle school and high school environment to get up and leave if they find that they're breaking down or they just can't cope with things. Letting people know at the school what is going on with your family, letting them know that there is an issue and that there may be times that this student may not be at their at their best or might need to actually retreat. It's very important to let the people know there aren't enough programs of this kind, but I think that the parent or the student themselves, depending on the age, could establish some sort of dialogue with the guidance counselor or their teacher and say, hey, I'm struggling, I'm going through this, and I believe that anybody with a heart would, would allow them the, um, the time and the freedom necessary to grieve. Well, and I would think, too, that I guess a history teacher or current events, you know, that's covered in the high school. You know, the teacher may handle it differently. You know, if they're talking about the war, they're talking about things going on. If they know that a person in the classroom has a parent or a sibling, you know, that's fighting over there. Yes. yes. Uh, that's kind of a, a, a touchy possibility. It depends entirely on the personality of the child. Sometimes the child is withdrawn and doesn't want to have attention drawn to them. Sometimes they don't want to always be the one whose brother is in the war. They want to kind of have a life, especially in middle and high school, where they aren't just the identity of the, of the child or the, the person that's gone off. They want to be known and liked and have a life outside of that. And that's where it's a very gray area. It depends on the child's personality. Does the child want to be outgoing and share pe- things with people? Or does the child feel more withdrawn and quiet and not wanting to share that. And that's something the parent and the child would know or feel, and you'd have to be sensitive to that. 
Yeah, well, you'd have to communicate with your your sibling and even know to ask. You know, I don't know how many of our service member families, you know, based on the emails that we're getting, would even know to broach that topic with their child. But I could see where it would be a big relief to a child to go, well, no, I don't want all this out there, or yes, I do want to talk about it. Absolutely. Or at the high school level, if a, if a uh, curriculum warrants having a particular topic being uh, presented, at least the teacher could have a little uh, forethought to, to pull the, the kid away and say, look, we're going to be talking about X uh, in the next couple of days. Just wanted to let you know this. And then if the child doesn't feel they can handle it or doesn't feel they can handle the peer stares, then they the child at least has, can be braced and be able to be proactive about how they're going to deal with it. Absolutely. Jody. I'm going to, I know you need to go, but I would love for you, if you, you know, had one thing you would want our listeners to take away with from today's show about siblings and deployment, what piece of advice would you give our parents or grandparents um, that are listening today? Oh, there, there's a lot. The, the biggest piece of advice for parents is to be sensitive to what the child is doing and saying, to ask if they want to talk about it or if they don't, and then to pay attention to that. And maybe, depending on the age of the child, monitor their own feelings and expressions so either they don't scare the child or, on the other hand, they open up a line of communication allowing the child to talk about what they want. Every child is experiencing the loss of their sibling in a different way than the parent is or the grandparent is. And it's very important to allow that communication, whether it be, I don't want to communicate, or please let me talk about this. I am not my brother. I am not my sister. I am me, and I'm feeling these things, and I need to feel safe to express them. So you would recommend going, would you recommend going to counseling as a family, and not necessarily just for counseling purposes, but to open communications and to have some guided discussions? Oh, (laughs) well, you're talking to me, a counselor (laughs) therapist, I absolutely (laughs) feel it's an excellent uh, forum because it is a third party. There is not the dynamics of uh, the child always being told one thing or another or being forced fed. Here you've got a third party, somebody who is neutral, somebody who can manage the conversation, allow for the dialogue, and maybe ask the questions that maybe aren't being asked. So absolutely, I'm, I'm a firm believer in bringing it to counseling, bringing family counseling together, and allowing all the parties to be heard and understood. Jody, thank you so much for being with us here today. You know, every time you come on the show, I feel like we all went to counseling. You know, you give us opportunity to learn. You give us opportunity, you know, to have stronger, better families uh, through your advice. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I look forward to next time. We'll Good. see you then. Thanks, Jody. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. So, Robin, one of the things that that Jody brought up was that whole concept of bringing the family in with a third party. Um, uh, and I think that's so important because I, I know in the, in the dynamic family changes that I've had, you know, with the loss of my mother and then the loss of the marriage, you know, with two elementary school-age children, the counselor can sit there and help the child articulate in ways that I can't as a mother because I kind of speak for my kids, you know, or I think I know my kids. And they see, you know, what she calls micro expressions, little expressions Mm -hmm. on the kids' faces, and she would go down, you know, kind of different avenues that I would never think to talk to my kids about. And I think it is, was almost like a relief valve. You're like, you know, you go in there, she'd ask all these questions, she'd get the kids talking, and they felt safe. You know, nobody was really corrected or um, reprimanded for the way they were thinking or feeling, mm-hmm. and everybody came away with a, with a relaxed state and a better understanding of what everybody was going through. And I think that's so important because I'll tell you, kids need to know of someone that they can turn to and speak clearly. They're going to wonder, is my mom going to be mad if I say this? Is my, would, would dad be upset with me if I were to say that? And I think even at a young age, children sort of get this sense of, not censorship, but this sense of they, they need to be doing things for their parents' approval and, and um, 
if they say something that might be negative or I'm angry at my sibling because he didn't write to me, well, of course, that's we as adults understand that, but a child doesn't understand why did Big Brother not send me a letter? I wrote to him. He should have gotten it by now. And especially the little ones don't have that perspective of how long does it take to get mail over there uh, why wouldn't they be able to sit down and write right away well of course they can't do this but children don't quite have that perspective yet yet for them to feel angry they're going to say oh, well I can't be angry because mom's going to get mad at me having a counselor whether it be the school uh, counselor or whether they're going to a uh, an outside counselor, family counselor like Jody, it's so important for these kids to realize that they can say what's on their mind without the glare from mom or the or the worry that mom's going to be disappointed in them on top of the stress that the family's already got. Well, and Rob, to take that one step further, I just we just got a post uh, coming in from a listener who said the older children deal with the issue of you can't be mad because your brother's serving your country. You can't be mad because right. it's unpatriotic. And that's another way to silence, you know, our teenagers and our middle-aged kids who are looking at it from the perspective of, you know, I sound unpatriotic or I sound, you know, like a whiner. Right. Because they're out there serving their country and I'm mad and I, you know, and there's condemnation, especially among military families who might have a brother or sister and a parent that served. It's not uncommon that, you know, parents serve and then their children serve. Um, and that's something that can be brought up that says, you know, you have a right to your feelings. It's okay to be angry about X, Y, and Z. doesn't make you unpatriotic. It just makes Correct. you human. That's correct. And we as adults can discern this and, and get the logic in it. But little ones haven't learned that yet or developed that yet. And, and helping them through that time and having them uh, listening to them or, or just being able to open up that communication. And there again, it's so important to have that open communication. I think one of the biggest kids for every parent, biggest issues for every parent is to how do I open that door? Do I go in and sit on the edge of the bed and say, so what are you thinking? <laughs> like you're really going to get a response out of that. Right. You really have to find the, the, uh, the way to open that door because kids Kids might not know how to open the door, but we have to sort of be able to stop and um, and sort of get the feelers those those feelers out and be able to find the way to open that door. We're on our way to another break, and uh, we've got some resources on the other side of the break that we want to share. A couple of websites that we've found, and a little more chat about this in such an important topic right here. On Military Mom Talk Radio. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, we've got a couple more seconds. I was a little early, but that's <laughs> We're all right. Today. <laughs> uh, sometimes the 15 seconds goes by in a, in a New York minute, and sometimes it seems like an eon. There's the tunes. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Have you ever wondered why America is facing such a health care crisis? Then join us for Dr. Peter DeVette Live every weekday at 1 p.m. Central on toginet.com. He'll answer your health care and medical questions and share with you his knowledge and opinions on topics ranging from holistic health care to spirituality and wellness. You'll find out about the roots of your health care challenges versus symptom management, the holistic approach, how the spirit, mind, and body connection is critical in both the development of illness and the solution to illness, how emotions are directly related to physical illness and how to read your body like a book. Dr. DeVette will also go through your personal questions and how you can navigate through the illness maze. Supplements, medications, therapies, treatment options, surgeries, all kinds of things related to your health. Dr. Peter DeVette Live. 
every weekday at 1 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Why do I feel so lousy? Why aren't my medications working? Why can't my doctor figure me out? These are just a few of the questions Dr. Kevin Connors will be exploring in Dr. Kevin Connors Live on toginet.com. The author of the book, Help My Body is Killing Me, solving the connections of autoimmune disease to thyroid problems, fibromyalgia, depression, ADD, ADHD, and more. He'll dig into these and many other conditions to dissect the mechanisms of your problems. Giving God the glory and looking for answers to make you look and feel better, to make you feel whole again. For more on him, his book, and the show, check out UpperRoomWellness.com. Never be satisfied with a diagnosis. There is always a reason behind it. And if you can alter the mechanisms that led you down your current path, we can change your future. It's Dr. Kevin Connors, live here on Toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help the sound, put your name at the top of his list and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on Toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Mom, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And for those of you who missed the earlier part of the show today, you're going to want to go back to iTunes and check it out, or you can download it from our host radio station, toginet.com, or you can check it out on our website, militarymomtalkradio.com. We were talking today about the effects of deployment on siblings. There's a lot out there for the effects of parents, of spouses, of children of deployed service members, but today we're talking a little bit about um, about uh, uh, the siblings. They're often overlooked in uh, our programs, and Robin, we know that our programs do the best they can to serve everybody and everything, and that's not possible, which is why we had Dr. Bramer on today to talk about um, some solutions for our military families. The one, first and foremost, that I think came up was to get talking, you know, get into right. a counseling situation or a guidance counselor situation, let your teachers know, especially if they're elementary school age children, um, so that everybody can support the child um, in the deployment because they have a little different set of conditions than a parent or a child or a spouse. Absolutely. And I also think that it's it's good when at least a parent has finally opened up that uh, communication door because we do, we as parents always do this when there's one thing that is is foremost on our mind we might forget oh this little one still needs to go play baseball or this little one still needs to go to their girl scout meeting or still needs to uh dress up and go to the daddy daughter dance and when there might be other family uh things going on we have to sort of remember that there are other things that to us may seem less significant, but to that child may be very significant. And uh, sometimes we do have to say this this particular thing right here cannot happen because of whatever, but we're going to do this instead or, or we'll find time for that instead. Sometimes life just makes us do those exchanges. But when we could accommodate those those very, very important things, that's important to, to that little one. And it's also going to help them bring that normalcy and maybe help them realize that I am still important in my mom's eyes, that my older sibling or my deployed sibling isn't the only thing that's on my mom's mind. My mom still loves me, too. Um, and it's just so unusual. It's so unique how children digest things. Every kid is different. But that, without that open communication, the misunderstanding festers. And when that misunderstanding festers, that's all of a sudden when um, then the child is carrying around a burden that was totally unnecessary because they've, it's created something huge in their mind. Um, and they, they don't then know how to deal with it at all. Well, and you know, Rob, we have some upcoming shows scheduled uh, based on what our listeners have written in. Um, 
and we can uh, talk about those in future shows because we do get a lot of requests of, you know, we had a request recently where one of the women's uh, sons had been killed, and uh -huh. she asked us for advice on how to handle her other children and her own grief, and, you know, this whole thing is a family like Dr. Bramer was talking about, and then we actually had two other requests for shows on what happens when the service member comes home and they're profoundly injured. Um, Correct. Those are real, real life, everyday scenarios that our military families are facing, and it all comes down to two things, loss and change. Change. That's it. Change. Yeah. Definitely. Sandra, I, I want to say that I did find a very good page on militaryonesource.mil, how service members can stay connected with younger siblings. There's a lot of points on this particular page, and I think that it would be very, very helpful. Um, there's some other resources, too, at the bottom. So I, I just wanted to put that out there uh, before we got off time. Off yeah, go ahead and read it. Tell us what some of those points are, because this is an information show, and for those of us who are listening and may not get to the site right away, give us some pointers. One of the things that it really did talk about was finding a way to maintain some communication. And I think as long as you're letting your, the sibling back home understand that maybe the mail isn't going to come as quickly as it comes from grandma, uh, maybe there is a way that they can mail. A lot of, uh, depending on where a person is deployed, they do have those Skype sessions that, that they will set up um, – the, the Skype uh, exchanges. So those kinds of things are really great. Somehow seeing big brother or big sister uh, on a Skype exchange is going to be so much more comforting than maybe just the letter itself. Um, explaining to the kids that they may not get a quick response because their SIB might be too far away and that the mail isn't just going to come as quickly as it would if it's just going down to Minnesota. Um, and it says, don't forget special events. Do your best to remember the important events in your brother or sister's lives, like birthdays and graduations, kind of what I was alluding to before. Um, remember to ask about your brother's uh, activities. The deployed person might be able to ask about those little things. And I know for a fact that when the service people get those letters talking about, um, I, I made a bubblegum chain out of wrappers. It's so insignificant, but it's something that's so important to to the deployed person. Maybe send an audio or a video, just as our, our friend uh, Jimmy Shea did in the YouTube that we've shared uh, with you today. Um, maybe send an audio or a, a MP3 over that if they've got an iPad pod thing, they can listen to it over there, send clippings from the local paper, all of those kinds of things, if the child is the one clipping the, the newspaper um, articles, that's a way that they can, um, they can stay communicated. Uh, in touch with them, creating a journal, a daily journal, uh, a little diary, a scrapbook. Um, well, and that, that scrapbook, you know, we yeah. talked about that with Janine from Touchnology, how important I that was. That. Um, and what the whole point was, was that the, the child who's away from the service member, whether it's a child or a sibling, they would put pictures in, they write, you know, little messages about what important events were happening in their life that they could send you know, they could share with the deployed service member when they came home. So they, both people wouldn't feel that they missed much. I mean, they That's missed right. stuff, but, you know, they missed right. each other. But at least it's a way of, of recording that time period that they're away so, you know, people can feel that they are still loved and thought of at special family events. And we should say that's touchnology.com, and the touch, and it's a hyphen, knology.com. She had some wonderful things. Another guest that we had a while back was J.C. Eckhart. She wrote a book called These Boots, and it does, in fact, include some things, um, not only about the parents, 
but about siblings uh, as well as children of the military. So that particular book also, I think, would be very, very helpful. Lot, lots of stuff that uh, we'll definitely bring up in another show. This is way too much to n just try to wrap up here, Sandra. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of concepts. You know, when you think about the different ages of the kids and, you know, then their personality types, what do they, do they are they private or are they more public? Um, you know, is the issue deployment and or is the issue illness or injury coming back from deployment? You know, there's okay. so many, so many things that, that we could talk for another, you know, two shows on this and we will. We will. That's the, one of the things we can do, <laughs> and we will. Um, before we wrap up the show, Sandra, let's let's have a quick update on the Go Army Homes Cookbook. Oh well, you know the Go Army Homes Cookbook is in its final stages, and okay. um, we're putting out our requests for recipes. Um, we still have a couple sections that need fattening up. Um, we've got wonderful recipes coming in from our service members. We did test the uh, pumpkin pie in a jar, the apple pie in a jar. And we did cherry pie in a jar. I got to tell you, my crust didn't turn out that great. You know, you put the crust in the bottom of the jar, and then you bake it, and yep. then you put the um, you put the filling in, and then you cook it, and then you flip it upside down like you're canning it, and put it hot hot water. You know, after you clean everything, just like you're you know canning fruit and stuff like that. Right. But, yeah. But for some reason, my crust just came out like crap. I don't know. They were rock hard in the pumpkin pie one. I was chipping it out literally with a knife trying to get it out of the bottom. <laughs> and then the other one in the pa apple pie got so soggy. So I think we're going to have to call one of our chef friends that was on Motherhood Talk Radio and yes. talk to them about how do we get these pie crusts right. Because for those of overseas service members that like the crust, Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I needed to make it thicker or thinner. I don't know. But um, we're, we're going to get to the bottom of it. But if you have recipes, please send them uh, to our Go Army Homes. Um, uh, you can just send it to my mailbox, sandrabeck2 at AOL.com. That's like my name, sandrabeck, the number two at AOL.com. And keep sending those recipes in because those pies in a jar were just fantastic. I think that's such a great concept. Sandra, next week we do have Marcella Stretch coming back uh, from the Parents of Deployed Service Members. Can't wait. She's just such an awesome person. When we have her on, we're, we always have such great fun. And also next week we've got scheduled uh, Autumn Arnold. Arnold. I'm, I have the hardest time saying Autumn Arnold. Oh, well, I want to call her Amber. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm not much better. But, yeah, she's going to be checking in with us on our weight loss challenge and our fitness challenge for our uh employed service members and their families and our military moms. That's wonderful. And we can talk a little bit about some of the good food that you've got in that cookbook because I'm sure that there's some great recipes that we might want to kind of give a preview on. Absolutely. I think that that would be, that would be great. I, I was, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here cracking up because you wanted to get to the bottom of the, of the pie crust issue. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. These pie crusts, that it makes or breaks the pie. And, you know, I think of this poor deployed service member sitting on the, you know, mountainside in Afghanistan all ready for this pie, and he, he knows it's coming in his package, and it's there in the jar, and it gets there safe, unbroken, and it gets to the bottom, and he's got to use a chisel to get the pie crust out. We, we can't let them <laughs> Down. Because it's like a piece of lead in the bottom yeah. of the jar. <laughs> well, see, this is why we're, you, we have this. Uh, we're trying all the recipes, so they are tried and true recipes when everyone gets this book. <laughs> oh, well, you know what, Rob? Thanks for another great show. And um, next week we will be same time, same channel. And uh, I think we're ready to end the show. We're ready. Have a great week, everyone. And thanks for tuning in to Military Mom Talk Radio.